What's going on everybody? It's your boy. I took a little break from YouTube and um, social media, but today I'm reviewing Cows by Matthew Stokio. I don't know how to say his name. Uh, <laughs> it's another book that will get me cancelled. Very disturbing. However, deceiving. Very good plotting. Very good um, story in this book. Good characterization. So, the basic premise of the book is um, a disaffected man in his 20s who lives at home with his horrible mother, who he calls the Hag Beast. Um, he got a new job at a cow crossing meat plant, and he is um, slowly getting in charge of killing the cows. And this man hates life. Um, looks at other people on the bus like, everybody's happy, they all have these beautiful moments, everybody's cool except for me. Um, he does have this one girl that he sleeps with, and he's like, oh, okay, this sounds cute and everything. <laughs> And then, she's a weirdo. She believes there's poison inside of everybody. She does self, like, um, colonoscopies. Well, she put, they put the camera inside you to look around, to look for the poison so they can take out. And she believes everybody has the poison. Um, his mother is very abusive. She's this huge, fat, disgusting lady who um, feeds him terrible food. Like, one of the first dishes is sheep stomach that's bowl was still the bits of what the sheep ate in it. And I was like, oh my god, like, that was just gross. If you ever boiled meat before, that's not a, that's not a good process, man. <laughs> like, it's, boiling meat so bad, like, even in Don Quixote, where they talk about boiling sheep, I'm like, they, they're not gonna have a good meal <laughs> right there. And there's a lot of weird elements to this book. Like, there's a man in the book, there's two different ones. One, he's like a sexual predator in a way, because, like, he keeps putting his erection on the main character. But, but but he gets off on killing cows, and there's another guy who gets his lips bitten off because he was making out with a cow. So, it's, a, it's weird. Because when you read this book, you feel like, oh my god, this is edgy. This is like new ground, early adult swim kind of sense of humor and everything. What the hell is in my eye? Um, but like, you know, that kind of early flash game, like clubbing seals that I never played, but I saw somebody talk about it, and they bought it for their like, other kids, like, don't play it, it's bad. So this is kind of that, but this novel does something really correct, and it's, it goes back to that thing Pynchon talked about, and I just can't get away from it, is that always bring in the human element. And what more of a human element than <laughs> being absolutely dissatisfied with your line of work and where you are in life, and wanting to gain your independence from your parents, but you're not able to. And with that, this book draws the line between, like, comical disturbing and just very harrowing like oh this is not fun disturbing as well and usually tonal shifts like that i'm not the biggest fan of sometimes because it can feel accidental and i think that's a bad thing where like it's like it's supposed to be dark but it's actually funny and there are some moments in this book where it feels a little accidental but then it feels intentional and it didn't bother me that much having these different shifts and I feel like it made the book a lot stronger. Let me give you some examples. So again with the cooking he gets so tired of his mother's cooking and he's like I hate my mom I just wish she was dead <laughs> like I just can't stand this woman anymore. She bullies me she pushes me on the ground um she keeps talking about my dirty laundry and everything like that she pisses on the family dog who can't walk it's the only thing he loves in life He's like, I hate my mom. I just want to do it. Like, you know what, mom? I can cook better than you. He's like, no, you can't, little bitch. <laughs> like, like I, I feed you, make you strong. You still wimp and everything. No, mom, I'll start doing the cooking. So he starts doing the cooking. And he is so spiteful towards his mother. <laughs> he just starts shitting in a plate. And like the first meal, he gets a fork and knife and just starts cutting it and like eats it. And then the mom eats it and just starts vomiting just horribly everywhere. He's like, all right, knock it off. We're doing this. He's like, no. No, nah, we're, we're gonna eat this. Oh, fine. If we're gonna play this game, we're gonna play this game. <laughs> and like, it, it, he does even more disgusting meals like that. I think just one more, but like, he's trying to poison his mom, and it's like, it's not working either. <laughs> so, that was like a really funny, just disgusting scene. It's more funny just because, like, you hate somebody so much, you're willing to inflict that level of like violence on yourself just to get at them. But then, there's also a horrible scene later on, and this, there is going to be spoilers in this video, I don't care, but like, because later on he gets the girl pregnant, and he comes back, 
and she's still obsessed with the poison. She just doesn't believe in the happy life of the living together and she's doubting it. And she um, actually reaches in and pulls out the fetus from herself. And she has to try multiple times to make the hole big enough so she can reach inside. And you know, she eventually pulls it out and she dies in the process from bleeding as well. And the main character comes back to find this too and it's, it's heart-wrenching. He was trying to build up this fake life and she kills herself through that. So and that's what I mean the line between comical horror and just real horror. And both are absurd. Like the real horror, like somebody reaching inside themselves to pull out a fetus is very absurd. But the effect and the impact is still there. And by keeping it absurd, it keeps it tonally relevant to the other comedic absurd things that happen earlier in the novel. Now, I said happy life. None of this sounds happy. So that's where it comes to the novel where um, he starts talking to the cow because the cow, you kind of get a glimpse of the novel, oh, this cow's escaping. And like halfway through the novel, one of the cows starts talking to him. When I read that, I'm like, okay, this is just all in his head, whatever, we've seen this trope a million times. No, this cow can doxy talk. <laughs> like, there's an underground society of cows who escape the plant and they're like, yo, man, we all want to kill this foreman. <laughs> we want you to help us. We want you to do it. He already taught you how to kill some of us with a gun to the head. It's your turn. And he um, relents and he kills the foreman because he doesn't like the foreman either. He's like, yeah, fuck this guy. I don't, I don't care about him. So he kills the foreman and that does something to him. It gives him certain elation where he finally feels powerful in his life. This is what helps him move out, stand up to his mother. Um, he actually kills his mother um, from the process of this also because he's feeling this power and he moves in the girl, he's making money. He He's always obsessed with TV and the lives they have on TV, like I mentioned earlier, where he thinks everybody has a happy life. And he try and he starts mimicking that with this girl. But he, that can't last, so he goes back to the cow to do other killings, that the cows do rampages, and they start killing other people. Eventually, they start seeing um, the main character as their messiah. And of course, because this is still the book Cows, <laughs> he has sex with a female cow. And the main cow, I forget his name right now, but he's like, mm, mm -mm, uh, you, you're going too far with this, I don't like this. So there's a little grab between power for both of them. Now, let me actually relate this to other literary stuff. When you look at the French decadence movement, with stuff like Story of the Eye, with stuff like The Torture Garden and whatnot, the underlying theme of those novels is, in Western society, we are so far removed from our own human senses, and the middle class kind of forgot something. They forgot the element of violence that's in the everyday. But Bataille talks about this extensively in his book, um, Death and Sensuality. It's in the Omni... Damn it, what was that book called? It was called Omni something, I forget what it was called. But it's all through that thing of the violence that we have separated us. Like we almost domesticated ourselves in a way. Even though domestication is a process through genetics, maybe taming ourselves is a better term for that. And you see that reflected in this novel as well, or when he starts killing, it's like, hey, this is giving me a power I've never had before. My life was just crap because I had to work this crappy ass job and live at home. And I had no agency to myself. And this gives me a certain amount of agency. And, you know, why do humans kill? Well, we're we'll pretty complicated, but I guess if you boil it down to a certain level, it's because we feel some other entity is taking agency away from us. So that's why we, um, humans kill like that. That's very simplified. A lot of you are gonna say like, well, actually all this stuff, and I'll probably agree with you. But it just kind of goes back to that root naturalistic tendency to do that stuff. and. And that kind of reflects when his relationship with the cows as well, where the more he kind of taps into that animal side of himself, the cows start respecting him a lot more and start following him. Now, obviously, this doesn't last. He tries to be the cow messiah. It doesn't work. He's not able to have the happy life. That's when his um, girlfriend commits abortion, and it just kind of falls apart. And by the end of the novel, he goes to the cow herd. He has nothing else. His mom's dead because he kills her. <laughs> His girl's dead because she kills herself and he burns both of them in the same spot. Like, yeah, he burns the body alive outside of the house and the dog's dead. And at the end of it, all he really has is the cows. And even though the main cow's like, hey, you killed this guy, you're killing these other people, you're doing this for bad reasons, he gives them to his impulses. Which, again, um, that's a serious thing. 
But then again, it also ties back into the thing I was talking about earlier, where it's this dark theme, but in a comedic setting, when I'm so upsetting that fits with the comedic before, giving to his dark impulses by becoming the cow messiah. So it's, so I, this book is always tipping that line of dark comedy and like just actual just dark literature. And, you know, always relating it back to that human theme of dissatisfaction. I think this book makes it a very strong read than you would first think. Um, get through the book, it's only 200 pages. It's gonna seem really edge slow and dark at first, but there's some good stuff to this book and I actually really enjoy it. I find myself there's a lot more to talk about for a 200 page book than I've had with some other ones. So Cows, I recommend it to be honest. Well, I recommend it in the sense that um, if you like my channel and you like my other past reviews, recommend it in that sense. Um, if you're not into that stuff and you're like, oh Ben, why are you doing all this stuff? <laughs> you don't have to read this book, it's fine. But if you do like that stuff, you know, I'm going to say, check out Cows. Thank you.